So Fleece, everybody wants to know about the, uh, how did you end up on Lock Up Raw on MSNBC? Yeah, I'll tell you that. First of all, I was in prison. I was causing mayhem, and, I, and then I eventually lay down. So they had a, what you call a skirt straight program. Bring juveniles in there, scare them, tell them shit that'll deter them from getting in trouble, you know. If you come to prison, you're gonna be my boy, all that shit, right? Well, I was the one that can break them all down, make them cry and all this shit, right? So I forgot about all the damage I did in prison before I laid down. You know, the two hundred million dollar lawsuit that came against the state and all that stuff. They, you know, the hatred there, right, towards me. So MSNBC come in and the warden asked me to do a documentary for all the juveniles in America, worldwide. And at that time, I ain't, like I said, I didn't think I was gonna ever get out of prison. I mean, I'm going on 40, I'm 30 something years in. So, I said, fuck it. Maybe I can do a little good and help somebody, right? So I told him, I said, when I do this documentary, I ain't gonna tell him the shit that their parents told them. Stay out of trouble, you end up in prison. They done heard all this shit. This shit don't register. What I'm gonna tell them is gonna shock their conscience. It's gonna make them think twice before they do shit. It's gonna make them think twice before they take time for somebody else, you know. So that's why I did it. The documentary, I went on and did a documentary. I had no idea when I did this documentary that I would ever get out of prison, that all these other sites was gonna come aboard and take what I did and put it in a negative light, you know, trying to make me look like I was just a, a predator. And like I said, yeah, I like ass. And to me, ass is ass. It don't make no difference to me where it comes from. You know, you get 30 years in prison, you don't care about where your booty comes from. You tired of jacking off, you tired of looking at smoke magazines. You ready to fuck something. And I was ready. What about uh did you ever watch you ever watch your character on Boondocks? I barely seldom watched that. I watched a little of it, but it aggravated me because that's not my character. It's portraying me as somebody I'm not, right? You know, I don't have to run up on no motherfucker asking for no booty. It's a known fact where I was locked up, I got pussy while I was locked up. Yeah. And it'll be another story I'll tell you about. But right now, back to this. Uh, no. You never seen it? You never watched the episode? I, I was, I was, that, 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 that fucker, they put that shit out. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. But I can't stand him right to this day, right? And he took me and put me in a negative light to try to generate a lot of money and talk, but what he did is it hurted me because I go up for a parole, I cuss him out. Cause I didn't think I was gonna ever get out, so I told him suck my dick, fuck you, fuck Frank, fuck all you motherfuckers. Kicked the chair over, walked out of the parole room. And they told me that same day, you got parole. The same day you kicked over the table? Yeah, and cussed them out. They said I had parole. Because they had something set up for me out of here. They done took my documentary and then edited it and then put it in a negative light, right? So they want me to feel this when I get out. I done caused them so much trouble in prison, so they want to show me that they're going to give it back to me when they put me on the streets, right? So every time I get a job, this shit'll come up, the booty man. 
motherfuckers taking their ass and all this shit. And motherfuckers was fire me right on the spot. When they do background checks, I'm at the door. I got over 30, 40 jobs done like that. But, you know, it didn't. You know, I'm a type of nigga I don't give up and fuck them. You know, you put me to the test, I go out there and get my money, you know, any way I can, you know. And I was trying to demonstrate when I got out of prison that I turned over a new leaf, you know. I'm done with all that cram shit, you know. But I can go back into it. You can, go, you can go back into what? Cram. If, it had, if I had to, I'm not going to sit out here and... and, and, and I got a wife now, and yeah, that's another thing. My wife know all about this shit. I told her about it before we got married, right? And she talked to the wardens at the prison, and they told her straight up all this shit is just hyped up shit, coming from different sites, trying to make money, trying to make me look like something I'm not, you know. I fucked some ass in her. I ain't gonna lie about it, but I didn't take it. What about, uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit. What about uh, the type of struggles you had? Uh, you told me a story about them taking you down to the uh, basement where Death Row was. Man, let me tell you this. I'm glad you brought this up. Eddieville, the segregation system, that's what we call the whole segregation. That's where you go when you get a disciplinary report inside the prison where you don't misbehave and the guards come to you like out here on the street, they put you in jail. In there, they put you in the whole segregation when you do a wrong or something violating the, the rules. They put me in a segregation I don't even know if I'm gonna talk about this shit for real. It kinda pissed me off. But fuck it, I'll talk about it. I was the only inmate in her that stood up against them. I'm not gonna uh, sit down and tolerate a lot of disrespect. Feeding me any way you want to feed me and treating us the way you want to treat us. When we go take showers, all the towels and stuff is dirty and they stink. All this shit. So, they locked me up one day, put me in the hole. And they put me in the cell that was linking water. I mean, the floor, the floor was just covered with water. So I called the guard. I said, uh, can you put me in the better cell? I said, it was some cells empty on my way to this cell. He said, no. I said, can I speak to a lieutenant? He said, lieutenant is busy. So I started hollering, lieutenant, screaming it. Some motherfuckers going to come up here and get me out of this cell, right? Lieutenant come up here. So he claimed that I was disturbing the walk. Told me, turn around, be handcuffed. So they took me off 11 and 12 walk all the way down to 15 walk. That's one of the lectures there. Down there, you got rats come up through the hole in the toilet. That's how nasty it is down there. You be sitting in your cell, and a rat will come up through the toilet. Yeah, a rat. And uh, the toilet is set in a square brick, brick block. They got a brick wall around the toilet, square brick wall. So when you, you sit on it, your feet will be flat out like that. You know, so I'm not going to sit on this motherfucker because the toilet is all green and shit on the inside and it's still like that right now. So I get over in a squat and shit. You know, but when they put me in that cell, he said I disturbed the wall. So the policy back in was four punches, 
four point restraint. That means strip you down naked, change your arms and your legs to a steel bed naked. And it's supposed to be for three hours. Well, down there in the wintertime, it's about 100 degrees. It's the summertime, so you can imagine how hot it was. So I'm laying down there. I went on there and put me in four-point restraint, butt naked on the bed. I started sweating real bad. So I said, fuck it. I made aggravated, so I go to sleep. Something woke me up. And it was about it was about five hundred flies buzzing in the crack of my ass, bro. Flies. Sound like I had a vibrator in my goddamn ass, right? Mm. So I'm pissed. If you move they go deep. I say fuck his shit. I'm gonna get him back. You know, cause where I come from, you always get your lick back. You know, we don't let a uh, situation get out of the way unless we get our lick back. So, when I came up out of the hole, after dealing with them flags, I'm, I'm feeling like something died in me, bro. So I come back up on the wall. They took me out of put me back in a regular cell. I said, I'm going to get any one of these motherfuckers back. So I'm the one that invented the shit wall in Kentucky State Penitentiary. It was due to that. The disrespect that they brought to me. So I was taking three gallon buckets, filling it up with shit, two cans of magic shade, and some glass, broken glass. So when I throw it on, and they try to rub it off of them, they just be smearing it on them, and the glass gonna cut into them, and the magic shade gonna take their hair out, make them think they caught a disease or something. Like it's a psychological thing. I'm going to fight you back. So I started that, and that shit took off and went into six years of it. All the inmates joined in, and we got to the point where the guards couldn't even come on the wall. They used to call me and ask me, police, can I come on the wall and feed everybody? I said, yeah, if you give everybody two trays. Sometimes I say three trays. If not, don't even come on this wall. We're going to shit you down, right? And so they kept complaining to the lawmakers in Frankfurt. And the lawmakers were telling them, you work at it your own consent, right? You know, that's, that's, that's part of the job, right? And they wouldn't do nothing for them. So this is why I went on for six months, I mean six years. And then they finally caved in and made it a felony. Yeah, if you throw shit, I spit on the gore, it's a felony. You go in the court. I'm done. Everybody else, some of them was done. Some of them said, fuck it, kept going, right? It was our only way to let them know you got all the billy clubs, taser guns, electric shields. We got shit. Fight that. We got something to fight you back with, right? So... After all that shit went down, that's when I, uh, about a couple of years later, well, months, not years, months, I threw that, uh, boiling bleach. Boiling? Yeah, this motherfucker, he made the warden, and he's nasty. And all the inmates is afraid of him, and he made Warden just being a nasty, rotten-ass motherfucker. And when he came by my cell, I threw that five-gallon bucket of bleach in his face. I thought I'd him boarded for four or five hours. Mm. 
Get the fuck out of here, man. You ain't my ward. And he went into a hospital. He stayed in there 18 months getting skin grafts and shit. And at the same time, I'm still fighting him on all other levels. It's... I'm let my man take over because shit get me frustrated for real. I'm letting him tell me directly right here because I'm getting frustrated and just to talk about this shit is to relive it and to relive it is to all oh, your bitterness and frustration come right back out and my whole day be fucked up. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to let you get back to that. Uh, what happened to your teeth? Oh, I got in my teeth. I had a full set of teeth. I mean, perfect. Pure white. It's perfect. Well, I'm going to get in. A, I'm in a hole, so I'm getting in a fight with this, this nigga. They say he been in the army. Everybody tell me, don't fight this nigga, man. This nigga no judo, karate. I say, fuck all that shit. Nigga, I try whoever. You disrespect me, right? You just got to whoop me. So when we came out of our cell, I ran up on this nigga. And I swung. Man, I hit this nigga with everything I got, bro. That nigga told me, oh, baby, you got to come with something better than that. And the nigga, the nigga come out with some of army shit. And that thing, you know, he got me, I try to hit him and, you know, like the way we grow up, you pop a motherfucker, just scoop him. He down, it's over. Man, I try to scoop this nigga and he got me in a headlock, bro. I mean, a perfect motherfucking headlock that I couldn't get out of. I mean, perfect lock. And he was choking me, he choked me so hard, I fought it, bro. And that's when I panicked, right? I said, this nigga's killing me. And all these motherfuckers standing around. I'm waiting on the motherfuckers breaking shit up. Motherfuckers standing around just looking and shit, right? So I bit him. I bit this motherfucker. And when I bit him, he hollered, ouch. And he swung and hit me right here. And I thought he broke my jaw right here. Cause I couldn't open my mouth. And that made me panic even more. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like that, trying to break my mouth away from him, and then realize that I done tore all this open. Mm. I locked on this nigga, man. Like a pit bull. Yeah, I locked on him. Tore all this shit open. So here's what happened. And he, he was a guard, right? No, nah, he's an inmate. He was an inmate? Yeah. One of them big, massive motherfuckers that come out of military. They got a lot of them motherfuckers in prison. Motherfuckers come out of army and shit, right? And so, when I seen the damage that I did, he got 32 stitches. I said, God damn. Shit. That's what I'm gonna start doing, biting these motherfuckers, man. <laughs> and so, the next fight I got into, I bit this motherfucker, bit his ear off. So when I, you know, in the whole, we get to go to the prison hospital, fill out a, you know, when we want to go. So somebody went there and come back and told me that they seen the dude that I was talking about biting his ear off. They say, man, he had both ears. Told me I was lying. I said, bullshit, I ain't lying about nothing. I knew I bit it off. But when I seen it for myself, I told myself, the next time I bite one of these some bitches, he ain't gonna get it back. I swallow that motherfucker before I give it back to him, right? So I got in the fight about three days later, right? Did the same thing. I bit this motherfucker the whole side of his face off, right? And swallowed it. I bit another motherfucker's nose off. I, I bit the motherfucker's top lip and his bottom lip, tore it off of it. This shit is documented. It's recorded and documented. I done shredded these motherfuckers with my mouth, right? Then it got to the point where then nobody want to fight me because they'll say, nigga, all you gonna do is bite a motherfucker. 
you got damn right, I'm going to bite the shit out of you, right? So the commissioner, her name was LaDonna Thompson, out of the correction academy here in Kentucky. She come to the prison. She said, hey, buddy, Frankfurt sent me up here because they want me to tell you the next time you bite somebody, they're going to take all your teeth. I can't fool shit. They can't take all my teeth. That's against the law <laughs> and all that shit, right? She said, well, I'm just telling you. She said, you got 34 bites. Damn. And you, I'm talking about a motherfucker. I done, I done beat them up here and told all, took all this off. And they, ain't, they, they, can't, they can't give it back. Motherfuckers, I took their top lips and shit off. And you swallowed and shit. Yeah, they tell me I can out like this. No lip. Yeah, I swallowed it. Goddamn right, you ain't getting it back, you ain't sewing shit on you. Because the motherfucker got his ears sewed back yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, he got his ears sewed back on, so I'm like, fuck that shit, bro. Hmm. So, I bit two more people since the last time I talked to uh, Madonna Thompson. So, she come back, and a guard come up to my cell and say, hey, you got a visitor. I'm thinking that somebody, my family or something, family coming to see me, you know. They took me down at the hospital and put me in a, what they call a restraint chair. Well, you sit in the chair, they can handcuff you to the chair. You know, it, it, it's made like that. So, she come around the corner, she called me her buddy. She said, my buddy. She said, didn't I tell you? I already knew what they going to do, so I said, look, whatever y'all going to do, do it. So a nurse came in, gave me a shot, put me to sleep. So when I woke back up, they done took all my teeth out and sold my guns. Yeah. But here's the part that I don't understand. When I get out of, when I do all that prison time, get out here on the street, I'm not in prison no more. And my sister took me up to a 2500 building on Broadway in Louisville, Kentucky. And we was talking about some teeth, you know, I need some dentures. And that lady told us, I think she said $1,500 $1, for a set. But then came back and told us I couldn't get no teeth. Said it was against the law. She said, I don't know what he did, but we have a, a, a thing here saying he's not allowed no teeth about some kind of violation of the law. Mm -hmm. What they was telling me is that when I had teeth, before I used them to fight with them, that now my teeth is equivalent to you just giving me a gun. Give me a set of dentures, it's like giving me a 357 Magnum. Ain't nothing I can do about it. You know, like in prison, when you file lawsuits, everything's in there is free. And I'm good at filing suits, right? I can file some hell of a suit. But in prison, the paper is free, the typewriter is free, the computer is free, the law books. We got a, a whole law office in there. I heard the shit cost, so I ain't got that money. So I couldn't do nothing but walk around with no teeth. I don't give a shit, though. I'm who I am. I mean, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nigga, for real, so I can tolerate whatever. All right, Fleece, you was, uh, tell me about the warden that, uh, that did something to you that I've never heard of before. I here's what happened. I'm in a maximum security prison in Eddieville. So down there, I'm turning up everything. I'm fighting. I'm the only inmate in that prison that ever did 12 years flat in segregation, the whole. I did 12 solid years in the whole. I'm like, motherfucker, I'll fight you to my death. They said, you can't wear these bars out, a guard told me. I said, no, I can't. I said, I bet I can wear your ass out, though. And that's what I stuck on. So I'm turning up all this shit, turning the toilets out of the floor. 
bolted to the floor. I tear them out, slam them, tear the steel beds off the wall, tear the whole door off, steel bar doors, being the tracks where they can't open the door. So the, they say they got sick of me turning up all this shit. And let me put this out there. When Martha Lane Collins was governor, you can look it up in the Courage Journal newspaper. It cost $650,000 to prepare the damage done in the electricity room. I did it. I told, took a mop wringer and beat the electricity off the stand. I did it. Now let me get back to you. Why these motherfuckers hate me. So, these motherfuckers, they didn't like me. So, they built a, down at North Point Training Center here in, in Kentucky, they built a, what they call a destructive proof cell, where I can't turn shit up in there. The bed was made out of solid concrete. They took the door and put a solid steel plate over the door with little holes in it like that where they can peep in and see what I'm doing. Everything else, the toilet and everything was welded and bolted to the floor, the lights in the seat, everything. So when they brought me down there, I'm thinking they just transferring me, just gave me a break from Eddieville. Just to cool me off of some old shit. They brought me down there on some bullshit. So when they put me in the cell, they stripped me naked. No shoes, no socks, no toilet paper, no mattress, no sheet, no blankets. And they left me like that for eight months. Because I already knew that they was... I said, man, why y'all doing me like this? I said, I ain't got no problems with y'all. My problems are with the girls at Eddieville. That's who I've been fighting. I didn't realize that when you fight one, you might well fight them all because they, they assist them. As an organization, they're going to all fight with each other against whoever fights them. So when wintertime come up, I had a lot of ice. Frost on the inside of my wall where you take your fingers and scrape the walls and ice come out. And I'm sitting in there naked. Mm. I said, one or two things going to happen, bro. If you don't go on and fight these people, you're going to die. You're going to freeze to death and then you're going to catch something, right? So I said, fuck it. They won't, I'm not going to die in there. So when I got done with him, I tore the whole door off, steel door. Tore the toilet off, tore the ceiling out, knocked the whole wall out. I knocked the whole wall down. With what? With a bed and a toilet. I took the toilet that I uh, done, done tore off the floor and kept smacking it into the wall to knock the whole wall way through. I, I tore the whole wall down. Well... The warden had his goals, and I knocked all the water sprinkles. I had all, all busted all in, and I beat everybody in the inmates' door so the goals couldn't even open their door. They had to shut that whole wall down. So they took me to the warden's office, butt naked. He said, take all that shit off of him. His name was Dewey Showers. And if he's alive, you can see me now, do he smiling at you. Yeah, he was a nasty, cocky, country, hillbilly motherfucker. He said, take all that shit off of him. They said, Warden, he might go off. He said, he ain't crazy. He said, what's this on my dad? I said, it's a 38. He said, you believe in loaded? I said, I know it's loaded. So when they took all the stuff off of him, he said, you see that window right here? He said, you see that fence? A uh, yonder. That was his word. If you can make it to that fence, he said, I ain't going to shoot number one time. You can run zigzagging, turn flips or whatever. If you touch that fence, I'll put you on the streets. I said, man, I'm not climbing out that window. Fuck that. So he told him, go and throw him out. I was picking them motherfuckers. I said, well, you can get me out that goddamn window. So he shot the gun. 
Everybody froze. Now you ain't supposed to buy. He shot it where? He shot it right there in his office. And I bet you right now to this day that that, that bullet hole is still in her. I bet you it is. You're not allowed to bring a gun inside of an institution, nobody, warden, nobody, unless a, a big rat or something like that, you know. He said, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm sick of you turning up all my shit. He said, now, I'm going to give you all your property back. I'm going to let you draw a hundred and fifteen, I mean, a hundred and fifty dollars of canteen out of the store. I pay for it. But the first time you act up, I'm going to take his gun and come down and I'm going to shoot your black ass. I said, all right. I walked across the loop. All the inmates walked. They said, who the fuck is this walking across the loop naked? I went to the private room, got my, my clothes and shit, went to the canteen. The warden already called him. They gave me all their canteen. I'm the only inmate in the hole. We can't Cigarettes, all this shit. So, the same day they had a white girl named Carol. Me and her used to cuss each other every time she come out with old big titty, red head bitch. Uh, I used to fuck with her, cuss her out. So when she came on, she looked at my cell and seen all this shit in her. So she stood up and told me, she said, you know what, they some weak son of a bitches. Give you all that shit back. And remember, that warden told me if I get one right up, he's going to come down there and go off. And just without me even thinking, I said, fuck you, bitch. She said, I'm writing you up. I said, write this up. I try to spit on and all, all this shit, right? So I said, fuck it. So here they come. I went off. I took all that shit and tore it up, uh, gave the inmates that didn't have nothing, been in the hole, ain't, ain't ate a cookie in six months. I gave them all cans of shit. I said, now I'm ready to go out, fuck them. Man, that warden come over, a little fat motherfucker. He came over, though. He said, what did I tell you? I said, uh, what? He said, didn't I tell you, 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 you do something else, what I was going to do, shoot your black ass? I said, that's what you said, so what you going to do? That motherfucker shot me. In the prison? Inside the goddamn prison. Shot me. Okay, didn't take me to the hospital. Had a prison nurse to look at. He said, just clean his wounds and bandage him up. <laughs> so... I filed a lawsuit on this shit, but what made me drop my lawsuit is my daddy got locked up, and we didn't get along, but I still got respect for him. Mm. And they took me in the warden's office and told me that if I don't drop my lawsuit, that my daddy who applied for uh, what they call that 30 days of shock probation, That if I don't drop it, they're going to send him to Eddieville Prison, where I done did all my fighting and stuff. And I, I, and I know they'll try to get back at me if he goes down there. They'll try to get at my daddy to get at me. So I dropped the lawsuit. Yeah, they probably would have tortured him. Yeah, it just made me go off. But uh, that's what happened. And so... I want all my fans to know that the reason why so much shit is 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 spoken of about me on these uh, documentaries is because they don't talk about what I did in the prison, right? I cost the state two hundred million dollars in a lawsuit. Western District of Paducah, the suit was Kendrick versus Bland. You can just look it up and it'll take you straight to it. Kendra versus Bland. It was my testimony. That same warden that shot me, we is in court. And uh, 
uh, I had help coming from the Department of Justice, Washington, D.C., and the lady that, my lawyer, her name was Black Lady, and I love her to death. Her name was Marty Fleetwood. And if you hear me, Marty Fleetwood, yeah, heads up to you. And uh, she came down there with two of her uh, black ladies. One of them was an uh, uh, investigator, and one was a uh, do all the researching and stuff. What, uh, for the state? For, no, Department of oh, Justice. Oh, okay. And we went in uh, in the courtroom, and uh, we, it was, this is a consent decree. So they didn't already told me, they said, look, please, we can beat your case, put you on the street, put money in your pocket. Uh, we can take your case consolidated with the consent decree and get one judgment for all the inmates for what you want to do. So I put me on the back burner and said, let's get one judgment for everybody. You know, I'm, I'm standing up for everybody. So we go to court, and these death row inmates start trying to break out of the courtroom, turn the ceiling out, and got caught, the sheriff and uh, uh, the federal marshals escorted all the inmates back to the penitentiary. And I'm sitting there like, God damn. Please let me go out there and testify. She said, I don't know what good it'll do. You don't come in a federal judge courtroom, turn up, and expect to help. But I went out there, and I provoked it at some bit. The same one that shot me, she was asking my lawyer, was asking me questions, and I was taking time to answer because I'm looking at him. And he had his head bent down. He was flicking in a pen on the desk. And then when his lawyer objected to my silence, he looked up. I said, and he called me a nigga, and I act like I was crying. And he was, he went ballistic. He's not crying. Can't you see he's pretending? And the judge told him to shut up, and he said something small to the judge, and the judge told him about a contempt. He said, you can take that and stick it up your ass. It was over. We mm -hmm. won the consent decree, and so two weeks later, they come in, told us we won based on that. And they told them guards that was carrying all them big belly clubs and popping motherfuckers in the head, we got to have your clubs. That was part of the consent decree. Take all that shit away from them. Then you got to redo everything. Then you got to take them double cells that I was telling you about, and you got to make them single cells. So they had to do a lot of renovation. Then they had to go to the Grange prison and build hospitals and stuff. So they put all that on me. It cost the state $200 million. And they hated me for it. So when this documentary came out, they... They didn't let me know that it was going to be, they, they had this shit fixed to where when I get out on the streets, that's why they put me out when I cussed the parole boy out. They was determined they're going to put me on the streets so that I can feel what they got set for me. I lost about 40 jobs. I got put out of a church over this shit. Where the fuck them, you know? I'm a strong motherfucker. I thank you for letting me out. I thank you for thinking that it was going to turn me down. Ain't shit going to, you didn't turn me down. I'm speaking this now to the prison. You didn't turn me down to the correction cabinet in Kentucky. You can't turn me down. Uh, and, and I still have that same thing. Fuck you. All right, Fleece, I got a question in the comments. Uh, I think it was yesterday, actually. How does a man go into prison on a 12-year bid and end up doing 40 years? What kind of crimes went on f for them to give you that much time? Well, it's, it's easy because, you know, like in prison, they got, a, they got their own rules and regulations. Like, on a fight, you get in a normal fight, that's 15 days in a hole. While you fight and you break his jaw, they take it up to 45 days in a hole. You stab him, 
bust their head, or kill them, you go to outside court. That's called a 7172 write up. That's the highest you can get in the fight department. So, when I go to prison, remember, what everybody is forgetting to re remember is how old I was. I turned 16 in the penitentiary. I'm in the penitentiary, the maximum security penitentiary with some of the rough serial killers. Motherfuckers that done killed whole fucking communities and shit. That's who they put me in around. You got people being locked up for ages. They man ain't on nothing but booty, butt, fucking something, punking the motherfucker out, taking the motherfucker's money. Then you got all these inmates in there that they families don't send them no money. So everybody's in there stealing, hustling, trying to get shit, right? So any disrespect brought to me, I'm taking it serious in the penitentiary. Because in prison, you fight a regular fight and you think it's over, motherfucker come back and stab you, kill you. You know, I done seen so much of that and I heard so much of it to where I got to the point where if I get in a fight, oh yeah. My, my whole thing of fighting is to do as much damage as I can to make sure you don't come back, right? And so, I mean, when I picked up my first three years, it was over this dude. Uh, they brought him from the Grange, from another prison. He stabbed somebody. And the person he stabbed had like a reputation in my city. And now this dude, not even from my city, is running his mouth like he's a tough motherfucker. Put him next door to me in the hole. He wanted to talk, I told him I ain't have no rep. Next thing I know, he threw a cup of piss around the bars, and I ain't gonna lie, he got on me. She got in my goddamn mouth. Yeah, I spit. I said, I'm killing some bitch. So the lady guard that was working, Kathy, she said, hey, uh, I heard what he did to you. You want him? I said, yeah. She said, when I let him out for a legal call, that's where the inmate gets in a hole when they go to the hole, you can get out, and make a legal call to call your legal aid to represent you or whatever they got you in a hole for, uh, even outside choice. So she said, I'm gonna open your door by mistake. I said, please do. I told the toilet off the floor a porcelain toilet had a water still in it. When she opened that door, I had that motherfucker over my shoulder like this, and I'm tipping down the hall. I don't want this motherfucker to see me. But when I was coming down the step, soon he looked up, I threw it. That motherfucker hit him in the shoulder. And, and dislocated all that shoulder, but he was still able to run. You could see his shoulder hanging way down here. And when the toilet broke, he ran all the way in the back, and they got bars that goes up to the second turn. So he clamped the bars to go up to the second turn. So I took the, the toilet that was already broke, broke it some more, took in pieces, and I was throwing them at him because they had sharp points on them. And every time they hit him, it would cut him, you know. So he made it to his door and he ran in his cell and they shut his door. So I'm not done with this nigga. You done threw some piss on me, nigga. She gave my mouth. Nigga, fuck you, nigga. I'm coming for you, right? So I went to an inmate and said, give me your toilet paper. So I got toilet paper from eight inmates, took it all off the road, threw it up over the rail, clammed up, uh, took a blanket. So when I ran up for her, he's standing up with his, holding his mattress up. So I was throwing the shit, hitting it in the ceiling, making it bounce down on him. And it was still hitting. So he get up under the bed to try to avoid it. So I threw the toilet paper on the top of the bed and a blanket over it and lit it on fire. Bring your black ass out from under that bed, boy. I'm going to get you. 
And them girls is hollering, they shooting all kinds of gas and mace. Get in your cell. I say, fuck you. And uh, I fucked him up. But here's the thing. Only thing that dude ever did after I, I did it, I get an outside charge. I go to court. He come to court, testify in my behalf. He tried to get me out because he know what time it is. But they still convicted me, right? And they gave me three years off of that, right? When I picked up some more time, I said, fuck these motherfuckers in here. I ain't gonna never get out of this son of a bitch. So the very next thing, I got in another fight. You know, same thing, picked up some time. Then I got into it with a guard. She cause them guards, they think, just cause I'm a guard like police is out of here, they they supposed to be held to a different standard. Like, they can say shit, you can't say shit back. Do shit, you can't. Man, fuck you. I'm going to treat you like I treat you. I don't see your badge or none of that shit, bro. You bring disrespect, I'm coming at you. I'll fight you, your whole organization. That's what I did in that. So, that's what happened. You know, is that right there, bro? What, ha what happened to, uh, you know, I'm going to go back to that part you got frustrated on. When you threw that bleach on that man? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, let me tell you about this shit. When he, when he. No, I'm going to tell you. The, I didn't want to say it on the camera. I'm going to say this shit. I didn't want to say it on camera because look at the mindset. First, I'm asking all my fans to just hear this shit out and take this to heart, man. I'm a hard motherfucker and I can be real hard. This man that I threw that bleach on, that guard. He did 18 months in the hospital getting skin grafts. All this shit was gone. His, his lip fell off. All that shit was hot. You know. So they built a special cell for me, just like the one you see in Silence of the Lamb, big plastic glass cell. They built that for me on 15 Walk in Eddyville. Where the, the 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 plastic shield thing went over the whole door where I can't throw nothing on nobody and they can feed me without me assaulting them, you know, or getting to them. So after 18 months of being in a uh, naked, they didn't give me shit. I slept down there with the rats and the motherfucking lizards and all that bullshit. They bring this motherfucker in, the one I threw the bleach on. Fucked me up one day, it was lunch. They had brown beans and they had hamburger. No cheese, just hamburger and brown beans in a, a paper cup. They said, somebody's here to see you. I done forgot all about this motherfucker. I'm thinking, shit, I'll never see him again. This is 18 months later. A guard turned the corner with his face all fucked up and all that shit, and he had my food tray in his hand. They wanted him to get back at me. So he handed me my food tray, and it was a big old pile of spit in the motherfucking beans, brown beans. I mean, it was so much spit, it looked like a hundred motherfuckers spit in it. In a little paper cup, it was golden, just the darkest piece you can, you know, you can, you can, you can smell the shit. Soon they gave me the tray, I smelled the piss, right? You moan, you smell like raw. And he handed me my tray. So it went through my mind right then and there. Oh, this motherfucker's trying to come back. And if I show fear right here, they're going to do this shit every day. They're going to put me in torment every day. So I grabbed a tray. I didn't use a motherfucking spoon, a plastic spoon or nothing. With my bare hands, I grabbed that big old pile of beans, threw it in my mouth, all of it. With the spit in it. With the spit in it. Ate it. Drunk the goddamn cup of piss and said, thank you. Can I get some more? It was good. 
And when they looked at me, they said, oh, God damn, he quit. That's when he said, he said, I'm done, I quit, I quit. Good, because if I didn't do it, he would have came back, he would have been the one, and he would have made sure every day he would have did something to me. So I say, man, I'm in a situation right now where I'm going to have to make a judgment call. You know, I said, fuck this shit. My body, I don't get sick anyway, right? I ain't, I ain't had a cold since I was fucking, what, 15 or 16. I'm 65 right now. You know, I ain't been in and out of hospitals or none of that shit. I ain't been in the hospital. So I came out of penitentiary after 40 years with not a scratch on me. So except they took my teeth and all that shit. But uh, that's what happened, man. And uh, I went out and took it, took it to the chin, man, because when I'm ditching out, I'm coming right back at you, you know. Uh, whatever they did to me, I did something back, you know, so you get me, I get you. You know, I got you more than you got me. So that's why I didn't, uh, uh, when it was all done and over with, I didn't have no hard feelings over it because you ain't did no more than me not done to you. I did probably more than you did. Right. And so, and here I am right now, still strong. Uh, and shit didn't affect me, man. You know, it was a psychological thing, really. And I did what I had to do. We're going to call it quits for the day. Okay. This is uh, another hey, good hey, day hey, with Hey, let me say this, though, before you call it quits, right? Yeah. I'm going to give a shout-out to Snoop Dogg, all these little rappers out there, and all my little gangsters and stuff. You know, I love you niggas bad. Y'all know white, black, whatever, right? I'm the real deal, bro. I'm a loyal nigga. I appreciate you niggas, man, coming to my aid. I wish all you niggas would come to my aid, bro, because this is some serious shit for real. And I want all my fans that is on them other uh, sites, because you got a lot of people running out there claiming, I'm Fleece Johnson. You ain't me, motherfucker. And, and they making money off of shit, right? Uh, put my head on somebody else's body. I had a friend tell me the other day, oh, is that you? You was, nigga, that ain't even my body. Dumbass motherfucker. <clears throat> but anyway, I love y'all, man. And I'm going to tell you this. This ain't even a portion of what you want to hear and what I got to tell you. It ain't even a part. This is just a fragment. What I got to tell you next, believe me, you don't want to hear this shit. You don't want to hear this. Have a good day, hustler. Hustler spirit. Thank you.